So in the New Testament, we have what we call praying in the Holy Ghost. Sometimes they praying in the Holy Ghost. This is actually the foundation for prophetic encounters. That is praying in the Holy Ghost. When you see people, believers, um, who are born again, who have received the Holy Ghost, one of the evidences that you are born again is that you are given a language. The Bible says in the book of Mark, Mark chapter 16, verse 17, that these signs shall follow them that believe. If you believe, there are signs that will follow you. It says, in my name, you shall cast that word, demons. Number two is what? You shall what? Please talk to me now. So, is one of the signs that you are a believer. It said, you shall speak. And on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, especially from verse 4, when the Bible says, and they began to speak as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. Even there, they were even speaking another language. But if you want to understand more about praying in tongues, we see that in first corinthians chapter 14 our apostle paul you know was trying to put order in the church he was talking about praying in tongues and prophesying now the word prophesying in act in first corinthians 14 is talking about a communication in a language that is known that's the way i'm talking now you understand what i'm saying how many of you understand what i'm saying but there is a way I can switch to another language that you can't understand. So, I was trying to compare praying in tongues and um, prophesying, which is speaking in a language that is known. So, Apostle Paul was saying that when we come in a service like this, that it is better to speak in a language you understand than for me to come and I begin to pray in tongues. Or speak in tongues. Are we together? Praying in tongues majorly is actually for private worship, personal fellowship with God. Majorly. That's what we use praying in tongues for. If you look at verse 2 of 1 Corinthians 14, the Bible says, He that speaketh in a tongue does not speak unto men, but unto who? So it is wrong if I'm chatting with you and then I begin to. In fact, tongues, you with it is not scriptural to type tongue. What do we do to tongue? We speak it, not type kabayak, scantalabus contelia. It's demonic. And I've told you before that any practice that you can't find in scripture is not safe in practices. You can't just you can't just import a culture. Maybe I'm chatting with somebody and I'll be ah rangabayaka, all those things. Man, kambara, all those things is an abuse of tongue. I'm not joking. No. That's why many people are not seeing result. But when it comes to tongue, we are speaking to and if the person is there, you know, they are the one praying for the demon possessed. Just imagine he's possessed now. And I want to cast out the demon in him. So they start manifesting. <laughs> we are manifest, manifest, manifest. <laughs> So as he's manifesting, and I'm saying, I command the demon, get out. And the demon is not really, you know, what is the response of the pastor? Get out. Now, the question is, that tongues you are saying, who are you speaking to? To the demon, right? He that speaketh in a tongue does not speak to what? But to, so if you are speaking to God, when you are coming to lead us in prayer, and you are speaking a tongue. Are you leading us? You are having your personal fellowship with God. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, so there's a way you engage tongues. I can do that in my room. On my personal devotion. And I begin to pray in tongues. Say after me. Say praying in tongues. Pray in tongues. Is sacred. You must understand that too. And you must own that. The sacredness of tongues. Some people use it for drama. I don't like that. Even Christians, they are doing. I know they are doing drama. It's not. You don't. Don't use it. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Some people might not like what I just said now, because anything that is unto God, I'm not saying for God. Anything that is unto God must be done with reverence. 
is a secret. For no one understands them. Even you that you are speaking in tongues, you don't understand what you are saying. He said, no one understands it. So, so that's why in the later part, he said, what do I profit you? If I come and I'm speaking in tongues, I'm not profiting you. So he says, however, in the spirit, you know we are in the physical realm now. And as we are saying, I don't understand. But in the realm of the spirit, you are communicating mysteries. I want to chill it. Because you are communicating mysteries, that's my point today. Mysteries. For you to come to the knowledge of that mystery you are saying, you need interpretation. That is why a lot of information we miss when we pray in tongues without interpretation.